Hello, this is Dan, and I'm going to discuss files and folders in Windows 7. And this will apply to other operating systems, other versions of Windows, but for now let's just stick with Windows 7 since that's what I have running here. And the basic analogy to think about when you're dealing with files and folders is a file cabinet. So if you open the drawer of a typical file cabinet, you'll see a bunch of folders with tabs. If it's nicely organized and neat, each of the tabs will be marked alphabetically with names of various categories. And then if you pull out one of the categories of folders, inside of it you'll find a whole bunch of contents. And those are essentially the files. So going back to the Windows, let me pull up the example here. So let's say we pull up our documents and then we see important documents. That would be a tab on the folder. So inside each of these folders, they contain potentially other folders. And that's where the analogy breaks down a little bit because you don't often have folders being contained inside of other folders. Doesn't make as much sense, but in computers you can have any number of contained folders underneath. Let's first discuss the basic locations that you have that Windows kind of calls out. They're documents, music, pictures, and videos. These are most of the common types of files you're going to be dealing with, and a lot of times you'll be dealing mostly in the documents if you're a business owner and dealing with paperwork and files of word processing and that sort of thing. Of course, if you're a musician, you'll be dealing a lot in the others and so on and so forth as a videographer or a photographer. The important thing to, to note just with this little library section is it's kind of lying to you because there is no real libraries section. If you go down to your hard drive and you try to search for, for this libraries, you're not going to see it. But what they've done is combined two different sections. So it's kind of a mysterious pseudo folder that doesn't even exist. But the idea of, of the libraries is that it shows you all of the documents you have access to. So if we go to My Documents, there's an Important Documents folder only. And if we go to Public Documents, the Public Documents are shared with all of the users on your computer. A lot of people, I find, will just use a single user, so this wouldn't apply to you. But if you happen to have a bunch of people all using the same computer, and they each have their, sa their different user, you could share files between one another by using this public documents. It's kind of a, an accessible to all location. But you'll see that this documents under libraries contains both of them. You see all four, whereas going down into each of them, you just see the, the ones contained in there. So it's kind of a mysterious one, and I wish they would have come up with a better way to represent it here because it looks as if it's just the path. Now, if you actually go to your documents, and I'll show you that in a minute, you'll see the path up here, and it's a good way to orient yourself to figure out where you're at. Now let's go to that now. So we're going to go to the computer section under the hard drive, and we will find users, which is where all of the user contents of files are. We expand that, and then we go, so in this case I'm running as the present user, so I expand that, and then I find my documents and I click there you'll see the same important documents folder show up and then you can see we have the path to get to where we're at here and if I were to open up Microsoft Word and let's do that now so I go to my start menu and you can do it one of two ways you can actually go through the programs to expand it out but if you see that huge list that gets kind of tedious to find out where it is. I prefer to just type down here at the bottom Word and then right at the top here is Word. So it opens up, we have a blank document, we type something and then we go to save it. And you see that the save as has my documents as a recent folder and that's usually where programs like to save things, especially word processing programs will save things right into my documents. So if I say OK, it's going to ask me for the name of something. We'll just 
leave that alone. Now you'll notice here, it's still using this libraries documents, but it shows you where the path is selected. So you can see that you're in libraries documents. So now we saved it, we close it down, and there we have our document in documents. So you see when you save it, it puts it right into your documents. So when you save things without changing the location, it's often a good rule of thumb to look in the My Documents folder. And like we've shown, you can do that in a number of ways, but it's probably easiest. Just go here to Documents, and then there is your document. And you can open it up again, and there it is. Now let's say you're downloading something from the internet. I happen to use Chrome for my web browser and you're welcome to use Internet Explorer as well. I'll show you with both, or Firefox, or any browser you'd like. So let's go to Google and find an example document. Okay, examples of public documents. Here is a PDF. It has an icon to save it. So we go to Save. And you can see where it's trying to put the files. The default for most browsers is in the downloads location. And if you expand that out, you'll see that downloads is right in the favorites. So if you just say save, most of the time your files will be in downloads. Now let's go to downloads from where we are here. There's more than one way to skin a cat. We could go down to the computer and go into downloads there. That would be under users, your username, whatever your username might be on the computer, and then downloads. And there we have it. You could also go up here to the favorites section. You expand that out and go to downloads and there's your file. So downloads is accessible in numerous ways you can choose whatever you find most convenient to you. And let's show it with Internet Explorer. So we'll go down to the Start menu. And again, you can go to Programs and find it that way, somewhere in there. There it is. Or what I prefer to do is just to type Intern. That's enough to get us Internet Explorer. And we will then search. So we'll use MSN Bing, that's another search engine, to find some example Word documents. Let's see what we can find to download. Here we are. Actually, that last one looked pretty good. Notice it has a little dock there, so we should be able to grab it. And it asks what we want to do with it. So Internet Explorer is saying, what do you want to do with letterlegal5.doc? You can open it, you can save it, or you can save as. Save will just download it. And you can see this little pop-up down here at the bottom. So the thing to be aware of is probably up top. They've got your favorites, so you have whatever's on your desktop. Then you have the downloads, which is where you're going to see files that you've downloaded from the internet. Then you've got your libraries with documents, music, pictures, and videos. So if you plug in your cell phone and you copy over some pictures that you took on the cell phone, most times whatever process occurs is going to end up putting the pictures inside this, this pictures folder. Here's just some sample pictures that are put in there by default, but you're often going to find them here. And again, there's always multiple ways to do things. You could go down to the users your username, and my pictures. And then you'll see the pictures. You might be asking yourself, why do I only see Control Center 3 and not those other pictures? That's because of that public one. If we go back up to here and we go to pictures, you can see how it encloses both your my pictures and the public pictures. And public pictures is the one that has the sample. So if we wanted to take this other approach to it, we could collapse present and then expand public and then you would see the public pictures and there we have our pictures. 
presented here. So the important thing to take away is when you're downloading files, most often they'll go to downloads. And remember, you can always change this if you want. So you have the ultimate control, you just need to remember where you put them. If you don't really want to remember, then just going with the default, meaning whatever it's set up to do, is probably a good idea because then you can always go back to downloads and, and find the files that you downloaded. The desktop kind of follows the analogy of an actual desktop and putting papers and files up here might be a good idea for a few times for something you're going to access frequently but just like a good filing system to keep some organization you're probably going to want to put them inside the libraries or your documents to have them filed away in some sort of category. I, I know that many people start putting a whole bunch of files on their desktop and then it's just like a messy desktop can be hard to find things. But again, you need to do what works for you. And if it works for you to have them all on the desktop, then by all means, keep them on the desktop. So one more thing just to explain. When we go down here to the computer, you'll see these three sections, hard disk drives, devices with removable storage, and other. And I just want to show you, you'll note that I've got little red bars here because I've managed to fill up quite a bit of space. But this shows the different hard drives. So it can be a little misleading when you think you have all of these hard drives. It's not always the case. Uh, in my case, these are just different parts of one hard drive. These two are separate hard drives. So if you might have an external hard drive or other things, it's all going to be shown here. Even if you plug in a removable storage, they, they refer to that as a hard drive. So in this case, the device with removable storage is your DVD player. So that's right here. And then other is things like maybe your smartphone, your camera, other devices that you're gonna plug in and, and see appear here. So that is a not so quick tutorial or intro to files and folders. I hope that's been useful.